Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to talk about something that I've been doing for a very long time now. And even though I named the video how to create a counter zoom effect, it's not that that's not the only thing you can do with it. So what I, what I have here is just a, a, a plate of, of a, you know, the camera moving backwards through these pillars. And of course, it doesn't have a counter zoom effect. So that that's what I, I want to show you initially. Uh, how you can set up but it like i said it goes a bit beyond that so if i if i look at my result here actually in this one right what you're seeing is a compression happening between the foreground and the background and you know the, the these pillars around this area are staying in the exact same place where where if i compare this to the original plate you see that that's not the case so i'm going to go back to my compression here so you see the background's coming closer to us and the foreground's compressing uh, inwards as well but you can get variations over this. So if I if I now compare this to the um, the foreground, like I have labeled up here on the top left, what you'll see is that now the foreground is staying in the same place while the background is coming towards us, right? So the the, the compression is still happening, but we're just selecting a different slice in 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 depth of where that compression happens. And then again, if I now go to my my background right so what what's happening is that now the background is staying still as you can see as i put that shape there and everything else is just compressing backwards so it's not hard to set up so let me just show you how how to do how to do this and how to achieve this effect let me show you what i'm working with here what i have is a plate of the cat as we saw before the camera is just going backwards nothing terribly exciting happening and all all i did is i threw a camera tracker at it and once you have your camera track that is that's decent enough all you need to do is basically select a slice and in, in depth of where you want to have that compression happen. So let me show you what i'm working with so all, all i have in my in my script is just a shot of the camera you know traveling traveling backwards through this corridor. And all I did is I threw a camera tracker at it. And once I have that camera tracker, of course, we get tracking points. And with those tracking points, I make sure that I get a camera tracker point cloud. Once I have that, I can look at my 3D scene and you can very quickly see a representation, a 3D representation of where those points lie in space. You don't necessarily need to judge it from this view because you can always just do stuff from, from the 2D view directly and just select any point that's been tracked and then create geometry on that space. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's say for, for our compression here, we want it to happen at this depth. Right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right here is right click and then I'm going to say create anything really. But let's say let's say a card. Right. So once we have that card, all the information that we care about is that translation in Z. Right. So in this case, it's minus 16. So I know that if I create a new card because I don't really want any other translations or rotations added to it, all I'm really keeping from this card is the translation in C. So I'm going to go ahead and zero out that translation in Y, X as well as all of these rotations. I'm gonna zero all of them out. And then I'm going to scale my card quite a bit. Let's say something like 50 or something, something around there. So if I look at this in the 3D scene now, right, I know that that card is sitting at the height of that of that column right there. So of course you want to make sure that your track is sitting, you know, probably this, you know, the camera should be higher, but for, for all intents and purposes, this should give you a good idea of how this works. So that card is now sitting at the place where that where that pillar is sitting. So if I go ahead now and make a projection for it, like I've done here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rebuild it for you guys here. Let me just show you how, how you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a project 3d i'm going to connect it here and then for the camera so for the footage we want to make sure that we connect it to our plate so i'm going to do that right here just keep it nice and tidy then i'm going to connect the camera here to our tracking camera and then i'm just going to bring in a scanline render once you have your scanline render in place all you need to do is come here back to the camera tracker and from here i'm going to be exporting another camera so i'm just going to say camera and i'm going to turn off the link output because i don't want it to be expression link i want those keys to be live on the camera so i'm going to hit create so now i'm going to open the properties for that camera and you want to select a frame where you want this to happen you don't want a moving camera for this you you want this to be a camera that's static so in this case i'm going to you know select anywhere really you can go at the beginning the end the middle i'm just going to select somewhere in the middle and i'm going to get rid of all my keyframes right so i'm going to say no animation for translation no animation for rotation and what that's going to do is it's going to plant it in space at that specific point for that specific frame and i'm going to go here into projection and i'm going to get rid of any 
animation for that focal length as well. But once you have that there, you can just connect your camera to your scanline render. And if we compare this frame where we remove the animation, right, if we go here into our 2D view and I compare this to our plate, what you're going to see is that they match perfectly, right? Because the camera, even though it doesn't have any animation, it does have the coordinates for that specific frame. However, if I play this back now through the scanline render, what you'll see is that where we place that camera in space is where the center of that compression is happening so that pillar over here i'm gonna go full screen so you can see easier so that pillar here right around the middle where we selected our point is where things are going to be frozen where everything else is going to be moving around them right so you can see that pillar is staying in place while everything else is compressing either inwards or outwards, depending whether it's a foreground or the background. That's kind of it, really. So if you want to do something different, right, let's say you want it to compress from the back forward or for the forward back, all you need to do is place the camera in the correct point in space. So if I go back here again to our camera tracker, and now I'm going to select this point that's way in the background, right? And I'm going to say here, create, and again, card, right? So with this card information, I can see that it's sitting at minus 67.8. So I'm going to copy that value. Now I'm going to come back here to my projection, look through my scanline render, and this time I'm going to copy translation for the card that we created. So I know that that card now, if we look at it in 3D space, is going to be sitting way back here, whereas before it was sitting somewhere here around the middle. So now, if I look at this through my scanline render again, we are not getting full coverage, and that's of course because now if we look at the scene in 3D, the card is smaller than it should, so it, it can't really fit all of that projection. So all we need to do is come back here to our scanline render, and you want to scale your card here in the uniform scale until you get a full coverage. So I'm going to even go further. So let's say 160. And now if I play this back, what's going to happen is that everything else is going to be moving except the background. So if I if I really zoom in here, we'll see that the background's pretty still while everything else is sort of moving around it. So you can see everything is moving to the back but the back is staying put and same goes for the foreground if we wanted to look at our camera tracker again and now this time select something here in the foreground i'm going to right click and say create card this new card i'm going to get rid of the old one this new card is sitting at minus 4.8 so i'm going to copy that value and z i'm going to come back to my card and this time i'm going to remove that minus 67 and paste the new value so now if we look in 3d space you'll see that the camera is really close to the camera of course the, the card is really close to the camera and if we look at the scanline render once again and I play this back what you'll see is that the foreground now is what's frozen while everything else is traveling towards it you sort of generate an anchor by selecting where you want to place this and of course this is a very straightforward shot you might want to be a bit more creative with the geometry you're using like a card is, is a very easy implementation for the shot but if you if you have something a bit more complex or if you have more geometry there's a lot you can do with this that doesn't involve you with rethinking about projections of how to do something like it, this is just a card with a projection and you can see how the feel of the shot changes completely just by doing that. So very, very straightforward. And that's kind of it. What I have on screen right now is the four examples where I have the original top left, the card at, at the foreground on the top right, and then the midground bottom left and the background on bottom right. So you can see by, by just changing the position of that card in space, you can get wildly different results with the same shot with very minimal effort. So this is actually a, a pretty nifty trick to do all sorts of things. I, I call it counter zoom just because it's you know something that you're going to easily understand what's going to happen. But like I said, you can get very creative with this and you, it can help you solve a bunch of problems. So I figured I'd share that with you today. So that's going to do it. Um, I don't really have anything else to cover today. So until next time, stay curious. Cheers.